This is the program that shows you the side of police chase videos they didn't want you to see. Bungled arrests, kamikaze cooks, and cop-based carnage of all kinds. Welcome to Cops Uncut, the real car crash TV. <laughs> takes a wrong turn out of the Gymkhana and a cop gets cut down at a crossing. Something of a favourite among the more stupid criminal element is the fleeing from a moving vehicle manoeuvre. We're really not sure why this activity is so popular since it clearly defies all common sense. Nevertheless, here on Cops Uncut, we see crooks attempt the same stunt time and time again. So how did this particular insanity go so horribly wrong? Realising there's a dead end ahead, these car thieves decide to bail out of their stolen car. Unfortunately, the driver's forgotten to stop at first. In slow motion, it's clear that this guy has been practising his exit strategy. Sadly, his lady passenger just doesn't see what's coming. Luckily, her close encounter with the telegraph pole looks a lot worse than it really is, and she gets away with only a few cuts and bruises. Just as it's foolish to get out of a car while it's still moving, the opposite is also true, as this footage of a Florida traffic stop is about to prove. Let's see that again. After being pulled over for a traffic violation, the redneck driving this beaten up truck initially looks like he's going to give himself up. But then he seems to change his mind and instead decides to play a little trick on the arresting officer. The runaway's passenger, however, is obviously much less keen on a crazy getaway plan. So if the cop tries to get in, the half-naked family leaps out. And wisely adopts the universally recognized case of shoot me stance. As soon as he realises no one's actually noticed him, he craftily legs it. Still to come. This lucky lady leaps clear of the lorry. And this bright spark takes on a power bar. There's safety at the corner. On my way. The police have been on the tail of the Cadillac in front since it sped straight through a stop sign earlier. Perhaps the driver's in a hurry to get home for his tea. Or maybe he just has an aversion to men in uniform. Either way, his early evening escape attempt brings a new meaning to the term rush hour. As he hightails it through the highways, it becomes clear that this suspect is in the wrong line of work. After all, why waste your life as a petty traffic violator when you could be making loads of money as a Hollywood stunt driver? He's got all the right moves, like weaving through traffic with only inches to spare, taking corners at impossible speeds, and even performing stunt jumps. But as he tears up the local landscape in his bid for freedom, he starts to look a little less in control. And his ultimate unintentional stunt is definitely his most spectacular. We're guessing that even the fugitive himself didn't expect to walk away from this one. But by some miracle he does, only to get taken down by the fuzz and carted off to jail moments later. This guy looked like he was auditioning for James Bond's next stunt double. But the dim-witted daredevil forgot one crucial part of the stuntman's rulebook. 
the chapter on seatbelts. All of which provides us with a painful reminder of why it's so important to clunk click every trip. Police Academy, lesson 762, the stinger. When all else is failed and you're fed up with the way the crook you're chasing is leading you round and round in circles, it's definitely time to consider rolling out the infamous stinger. It's guaranteed to be a smash hit all round. But how does this mysterious weapon actually work? The stinger or spike stick is actually deployed by officers standing at the side of the road, so you may have to drive around for quite a while before you find one. In this example, the police are in luck. A steer cop is waiting down this street here, cunningly disguised as a tree. The stinger is a strip of very sharp spikes, which is rolled out onto the road in front of the suspect's vehicle, instantly blowing out his tires. In this instance, the runaway is brought crashing down, as are two innocent passing motorists who have no idea what the hell has just happened. It doesn't matter how much carnage you've caused because justice has been served and you've taken a dangerous criminal off the streets. It turns out that the man being trodden on and cuffed here is guilty of disturbing the peace. And thanks to the stinger, he won't be annoying his neighbours with loud noise anymore. So bear this simple advice in mind. When your fugitive is driving you round the bend, it's time to put a spoke in the works. And remember, collateral carnage is all part of the process. However, petty the crime. Class dismissed. Over in Texas, the bad boys in blue are having a spot of bother with a local cowboy who's drunk in charge of a horse. I'm asking you to get off the horse. I'm asking you several times. If you don't get off the horse, we're going to take you off. And then you're going to go to jail. But the hammered horseman just carries on cantering down the highway. Policemen pursue the mounted menace just as they would normally, except that, in this instance, none of their usual crook-stopping techniques will work. They can't, for instance, use their stinger because the horse doesn't have any tires. And no one's got the heart to try ramming the poor creature off the road. There's just nothing in the 21st century police officer's handbook about how to deal with horse-based incidents. So with all standard procedure rolled out, the cops resort to sternly telling the man to stop. Surprisingly, this doesn't have much effect, so one enterprising officer gets out of his cruiser and hotfoots it after the horseman with his trusty can of mace. He catches up with the four-legged runaway and sprays a big horse-sized helping of pepper into the animal's face. Horses are, however, completely immune to the effects of weapons like mace and tear gas. Criminals, though, aren't. And when the drunk guy gets a lungful of the spray, he ends up falling off his ride all of his own accord. The cops finally get their man out of his saddle and into a pair of cuffs. And his trusty steed is led away, presumably to the nearest glue factory. This car has suffered a blowout on this snowy Ohio highway. The woman driver, seen here with her hands in the air, is at first glad that the police officer has come to assist her. But she's obviously forgotten that cops are danger magnets, and wherever there's a policeman, trouble is just around the corner. The officer takes a look at the car and helpfully confirms that her tire is indeed flat. Then he proceeds to lecture the woman about how important it is to check your tyres regularly. The lady is clearly fascinated with the cop's pearls of wisdom. But her concentration breaks as a random juggernaut attempts to crush her flat. Thankfully, the cop manages to save her from certain death in the nick of time. For this feat, he's later awarded the Superintendent Citation Award of Merit for Bravery.
commonly regarded as the most long-winded decoration in the annals of US law enforcement. After the break on Cops Uncut, there's a lesson on how to ram like a robber. There's a gun fired over a car. And this cop goes all gooey over a drunk girl. This is a pretty good drive. At the corner. On the way. Coming up on Cops Uncut. Drinking and driving creates a daredevil. And this fleeing fell on the lamp post. As we saw in part one, cops just seem to attract trouble, and they don't have to stray too far from home before danger strikes. Take this, for example. From our point of view through the windscreen of a police cruiser, we can see this female officer innocently crossing the road in front of her local HQ. Now let's switch to another point of view, this time from a cruiser parked behind the officer. Here's that policewoman again, and here's the squad car whose viewpoint we were just looking from. But just off screen, another car is about to make its presence felt. The teenage girl driving this car simply doesn't see the cop until it's too late. We could be wrong, but this accident may well have had something to do with the fact that the driver is completely off her face on a vicious cocktail of pot, Xanax and lots and lots of alcohol. Fortunately, the incident occurs near a place where there just happen to be lots of people trained to deal with precisely this sort of emergency. The quite why this cop has to throw his hat in the air is not entirely obvious. When the bank robber they're chasing starts taking pot shots, this pair of cowardly cops seem to decide that the best course of action is to let it in the opposite direction. So it's left up to a slightly braver female cop, Officer Bellis, to chase the armed bandit down in her cruiser. She spots his getaway vehicle at this junction here, but unfortunately the robber also sees their police car and immediately starts shooting at it. For a moment, it's not clear what's happened to Officer Bellis. In fact, she's pulled a variation of the exiting a vehicle while it's still moving trick that we saw in part one. Except in this case, she's also using her car as a moving shield. And by the looks of it, the cruiser almost certainly saves her life. The fearless female officer pops in a fresh clip and heads off in pursuit of her assailant. And, as we can see from this footage, she wastes no time in taking the dangerous gunman down. While these guys bail out of the gunfight, Officer Bellis proves she's a real trooper. And when the armed robber tries to use her for target practice, Bellis takes him down with a bullet of her own. Still to come, enormous amounts of alcohol encourage this lady to do some off-roading. Over in Indiana, where what starts off as a fairly effective getaway is about to go spectacularly wrong for this runaway traffic offender. The guy in the car ahead uses the age-old trick of pretending to pull over for the cops, only to suddenly hammer off out of the car park and down the road like he's driving the Indy 500. So far, so good. The trooper in the car behind struggles to keep up as the fugitive disappears into the distance. It looks like he might have got away. But there's an obvious flaw in this guy's escape plan. And it's the fact that his getaway route takes him headfirst into the path of an electricity pole at around 100 miles an hour. The collision brings the wires down, sending up a shower of blue sparks. Once the fireworks are over, the pursuing officer wanders around for a bit, looking fairly useless. He's got his gun at the ready, but we doubt he's going to need it today. The driver of the wrecked vehicle is lucky to be alive and certainly not in any shape to put up a fight. This indie race gets off to a cracking start. But when the reckless runaway takes pole position, 
It's all over in a flash. Police Academy, lesson 87, the pit manoeuvre. The infamous pit manoeuvre is frequently used by traffic police when they need to stop a runaway rascal in his tracks. PIT stands for Precision Intervention Technique, which sounds quite technical but actually just involves ramming your cruiser into the other bloke's motor. But while head-on collisions are not incredibly common, they are incredibly dangerous. So the PIT is often the very last part of a well-rehearsed three-stage procedure. Stage 1. Before endangering your own life, try chasing the suspect around for several hours, providing him with ample opportunity to A. Crash all on his own, or B. Run out of petrol. Stage 2. If your game of patience isn't working, why not get some friends to join the fun? With two or three police vehicles working together, you can attempt the pit's slightly less hazardous system manoeuvre, namely the box. Simply close in on your suspect from all sides until he's completely boxed in. The object of the box is to stop your suspect from getting away. So if at any point the guy manages to drive off, you'll know your strategy has failed. Which means that now might be a very good moment for stage three. While many cops favour the full-on demolition derby approach to pitting, often all that's required is a little gentle encouragement, like so. If the manoeuvres work satisfactorily, your suspect's vehicle will be completely disabled, while the suspect himself will be in desperate need of serious medical help, and therefore much less likely to run away again. So what have we learned? When you're sick of the sight of your suspect's tail lights, it's time for a pit. Pitting and boxing are fun for everyone. Why not get your friends to join in? Precision intervention technique sounds quite complicated, but all that's actually required is a firm thrust from the hand. Class dismissed. Police work can be unpredictable to say the least. Take this encounter between a Kansas cop and a woman who has parked her car on a bridge. Everything seems to be going well. The policeman talks her through selected highlights of the local parking restrictions. But the woman doesn't seem very interested. It looks like she might just drive away, but then she changes her mind. The cop makes a desperate grab for her, but it's too late. She goes over the edge and appears to take the officer down with her. For one horrible moment, it isn't clear what's happened to either of them. But by a miracle, the heavyset cop has managed to defy all known laws of gravity and hold on to the ledge. It takes all the strength of his two colleagues to pull him back from the brink. The woman wasn't so lucky. Despite the policeman's best effort, she slipped through his fingers and fell to the ground below. Mercifully, however, she survived her 35-foot tumble with only minor injuries. Perhaps this cop should have saved the small talk and cuffed the woman when he had the chance. Instead, he let the situation get over the top and very nearly fell for her in the process. Wisconsin, and the police have received a 911 call regarding another potentially suicidal person. The officers in this squad car have positively ID'd the car ahead and followed it onto Green Bay Bridge. They try to pull the driver over before she can do any harm to herself, and for a moment, it looks like she's yielding to their requests. But instead of giving herself up to police custody, she casually strolls round her car to the bridge wall, and her intentions become painfully clear. The pursuing officer makes a lunge for her at the same split second she jumps. And seen here in slow motion, the ballsy trooper just manages to grab hold of something and hold on. As assistance arrives, the cop tries to pull the lady out of danger on his own, but this woman obviously has her heart set on ending it all today. She even struggles against the attempts to save her life. It's not until two more officers join in the effort that she's brought back over the side of the bridge to safety. 
This time the cop managed to catch his jumper and hold on as she tried to break free. And it's lucky he did too, because there's no way she would have survived the 200 foot drop into the river below. Love can blossom in the strangest of places, even if you're a traffic cop on a late shift. The person ahead keeps veering her vehicle into the left-hand lane, which means she's either British or just very, very drunk. And from the way she launches her car into the air as she goes over this bump, our money's on the latter. She's clearly a danger to herself and to anyone who wanders into her wildly swirling car. Which is why the cop on her tail needs to get her off the road as soon as possible. As it happens, the next intersection presents the befuddled driver with an opportunity to do the policeman's job for him. Instead of turning left or right at this T-junction, the woman manages to miss the road completely and ends up plowing right into the middle of a snowy field where she finally comes to a grinding halt. Carefully, the officer approaches the vehicle, not sure precisely what to expect. But his suspect turns out to be an attractive blonde, and this policeman instantly turns on the charm. Hello. How are you? He demonstrates concern okay, for her well-being. I mean, I've been behind you. I can't believe you didn't wreck when you ran through those railroad tracks. And even tries a bit of flattery. Now the ice is broken, it's time for the cop and his newfound lady friend to get better acquainted. Once you take your seat belt off and come on out. The trooper offers the wobbly lady all the support she needs as she exits her car, proving that he really is an officer and a gentleman. Now you're in a field, so yeah, I'm gonna help you out here, okay? As the pair crunch through the snow arm in arm, the policeman and his drunken charge make here. the perfect couple. The cop dazzles her with his finest small talk Hi. skills. What's your name again? And even feigns Sherry interest Matthews. in her family life. I, I have two girls in OSU. Is that right? Yeah. Finally, the officer plucks up yeah. the courage to ask her the question that's been on okay. his mind all evening. Sherry, you got any guns or knives or anything on you? Okay. Let's sit back and take a look at the highlights of today's play. Copper versus car window ended in a tie. Crook against car door came to a bone crushing conclusion. The car tire spike strip decider was a smash for spectators. This peacekeeper was taken out by a solid spiker. And a lightning run comes to an end as this guy hits the post. Be careful out there.